Good morning and welcome to the Employment Hour and 30. I'm your host, John Scholes, alongside Lior Sanfiru from the Sanfiru Tamarkin Law Firm. We're going to condense an hour-long radio show into 30 minutes here. Lior, some important stuff to get through. Uh, the number 1-855-821-5900. We'll get to a call very shortly. First, let's, uh, let's talk about it. It's our first show. What do you do and what's the show about? Well, John, I'm an employment lawyer. I, I help people that have lost their jobs, enforce their rights. I help in all workplace situations. And we're here to educate and inform people. Try to talk to people about the legal rights that they didn't even know they had. We want to make sure that if you lost your job, if you have a workplace issue, you have the information that you need to pursue your entitlements. So if you don't know anything about your workplace rights, if you're confused, something happened, maybe you lost your job, maybe your boss is not treating you well, pay attention to us. We'll talk about a lot of interesting things in the coming weeks and hopefully educate some people about what they need to know in the workplace. I know they can reach out at uh, Lior at employmenthour.com as well through email, right? Uh, email and they can check out uh, employmenthourtv.ca. Uh, we will make it very easy for people to contact us. We'll talk about some additional tools during the show as well. 1-855-821-5900 is the number and we'll get to a call right now from Dan. Just calling on behalf of my brother, he's been with the company for just over two years, recently went on vacation, got back from vacation, and he was told that he was going to be let go for cause. The problem is they've given him two weeks of severance, he hasn't signed anything, his release letter basically stated that uh, he was released with no cause, and the reasoning behind it was the position is no longer needed and he cost the company too much money. My brother is 31 years old, he was a lower level type of management, he's been given bonus, two years in a row, Christmas bonuses, but there's no contract saying that his own bonus as well. Well, the good thing is he hasn't signed anything. No, he hasn't. Right? That, that would have been, one. That would have been the kiss of death, yeah. frankly, if he signed anything. <laughs> totally. But there's actually more issues here than just the bonus. Uh, the, the call was about does he get the bonus as part of his severance. But I'm going to take a step back mm -hmm. and talk about the idea that he only got two weeks' pay. I can tell you with, and with no doubt whatsoever, John, that he would be owed much more than two weeks' pay. It could be six months' pay. So before we even talk about the bonus, we should understand that that two-week offer is inadequate. We see that very often, employees being offered or paid a lot less than their own. And certainly with respect to bonus, a bonus does have to be included as part of severance. So he's entitled to his salary, his bonus, his benefits, and for more than two weeks. So I would encourage uh, Dan's brother to give me a call. Let's talk about that. Let's figure out how much he's owed and make sure that he gets it. Don't sign off on something that pays you pennies on the dollar. We're going to get into the uh, top misconceptions when it comes to employment law, but I want to go back to Dan just for a sec here. Uh, you said vehemently off the top, two weeks is not even close enough. Most people watching it are going to go, whoa, 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 it is. It's two weeks per year. It's a week per year. That's what I understand, right? John, this is exactly why we're doing this show. This is exactly the reason why I felt that it's necessary to educate people on those rights. It's not a week per year or two weeks per year or any other formula. We're going to talk at length as time goes on on the factors that go into assessing and entitlements, but we'll, we'll leave it with the fact that it's no formula of a week per year. It's a lot more than that. Some people could get a month, two months, three months per year or more. Right. So if you're, you've been let go and your employer says, here's your week per year, I can almost guarantee you that that's a wrongful dismissal. And we've talked about that on the radio show many times. You'll come across 100 severance letters and 99 of them will be, will be shortchanged. It's so rare for me, John, to see a severance offer that is fair, that provides everything the employee is owed. It's, it's in my office, when we see one of those, we call everyone around and say, look at this. It's that rare. Put it under glass. Now, almost every severance offer is inadequate. And it's inadequate, John, for two reasons. Mm. Either the employer doesn't appreciate it, doesn't realize what it has to pay the employee, or perhaps the employer hopes that the employee doesn't know, that the employee won't appreciate and understand how much he or she is owed. That's what we're doing in the show. We want to even out the playing field and, and help and educate people to understand what they're actually owed when it comes to their workplace rights. Well, let's get through a few of these, the top misconceptions of termination of employment. First one, you have to work at least five years for a large company in order to receive any severance. I see this all the time, people believing that you only get severance if you work for a certain number of years. If you don't work for, those, for that period of time, you don't get severance. That is wrong, wrong, wrong. Now, your minimum entitlements may depend on, uh, on the number of years, but when it comes to your full severance, what we call your common law severance, Everyone gets it. You could have worked for six months, John, and you're still going to be owed severance. In fact, short service employees are treated disproportionately better. So the message here, the, the, the takeaway is there's no 
five-year threshold. If you lost your job, you're owed severance. That's it. And, and whether you work for uh, a month, you work for 50 years, either way you're going to get severance. The amount of severance may vary, of course, depending on the length of employment. But that five-year threshold is a falsehood. It's not true. And, and I don't want anyone to believe those things that are just not, not right. And we did talk about this moments ago with Dan. want to get into this one a little bit deeper, and that is uh, when you're let go, you receive one or two weeks of severance for every year of service. That's it. That is, John, That's probably it. the biggest misconception when it comes to termination of employment. People believing there is that formula. Well, let's, let's get rid of that misconception once and for all. There is no formula of a week pay per year or two weeks. Your entitlements, if you lost your job, are based on three main factors. Your age, your position, and the length of your employment. The longer you work, the older you are, and the more senior a position you have, the more compensation is owed to you. So those are the factors that go into it. And for some people, that could mean they get 12 months severance. Some people, 24. Some people may mean three. But we have to assess those factors to determine how much you're owed. And it's not a week per year or two week per year. It's almost always a heck of a lot more than that. And I want people to understand that because uh, people believing that, well, I get a week per year. They offered me a week and a half per year. I guess that's a good deal. Well, it's not a good deal. You've probably been wrongfully dismissed. You have to get legal advice. So where does it come from? Well, unfortunately, John, the, the Ministry of Labor perpetuates this misconception. On their website, on their helpline, they'll tell you there's this rule of a week per year. What they don't tell you, John, is that that is only your minimum entitlements. You have significantly greater entitlements than those minimums. Uh, so if you believe that your minimum is it, that your minimum is really your maximum, that is wrong and that's a falsehood. And so many people fall for that falsehood and they realize later, holy cow, I was owed another $50,000 in severance. I didn't know it and now it's too late to do anything about it. Talking about the top misconceptions when it comes to termination of employment, this one's a beauty as well. If you are fired as opposed to being laid off, you don't get severance. Yeah, and, and a lot of people believe that there's this distinction between being fired and laid off. The law really doesn't look at those concepts. The law looks at termination of employment. Either you've been terminated without cause or with cause. If you did something so bad, so horrible, you stole, you hit someone, yeah, maybe you can be terminated for cause, which means you're not going to get severance. Short of that, you're going to be getting severance. So don't worry about those concepts. As long as you're not the worst offender, you get severance. And sometimes even if you've done something wrong, you may have done a few things wrong, you still are going to be owed severance. So this idea of why I was laid off versus fired, the law doesn't really recognize that. Those, those are terms that people essentially made up. If you've been terminated from employment, unless you've done something horrendous, you're almost always going to be owed severance. You touched on this one as well, and that is short service employees get little or no severance. That's not true. Where that, does that come from? Huge misconception. People believe, well, I didn't work for a long period of time. I guess I don't get severance, or maybe if I'm lucky, I get something very nominal. Well, the, the rule is that short service employees, employees with five years seniority or less, are treated disproportionately better when it comes to severance than longer service employees. So you may have employees that have only worked for a few months. Depending on their uh, age and the type of job that they had, they could be owed a few months severance. Sometimes the amount of severance can exceed the length of employment. But why? Well, the law simply says that just because you work somewhere for a short period of time doesn't mean it's going to take you less time to find another job. In fact, it may take you more time because you may have to explain to a prospective employer why you only worked at the previous company for a short time. So short service employees does not mean little severance. The opposite is true. You mostly see short service employees getting several months pay. So don't assume, well, I don't get severance. You work for a month, you work for a year, for five years, you get it, you give me a call, and let's figure out exactly how much you're owed. Top misconceptions of termination of employment. This one we talked about countless times on the one-hour radio show. That is being on contract means you don't get severance if you're on contract. We're going to talk a lot more about this topic in the weeks to come. This distinction between being on contract or independent contractor and being an employee. And a lot of people, a lot of employers, employees believe that, hey, if I call myself an independent contractor and I pay my own taxes, I'm an independent contractor and I'm not owed severance if I lose my job. That is wrong. If you have a regular job, you go to an office, you work regular hours for a period of time, the law would consider you to be an employee. 
It doesn't matter what you call yourself. It doesn't matter what a piece of paper says. So that means also that if you lose your job, you're owed severance. Uh, who's, a, who's a contractor? Who's on contract? Well, you have a, a leak in your home, you call plumber. a plumber. Right. right, right. So what's that plumber? The plumber doesn't work for you. The plumber is an independent contractor. He's in business for himself or herself. They come, they fix the leak, and they move on. That's an independent contractor. If you have a regular job, you're an employee. It doesn't matter what you call yourself. And that is especially important if you lose that job because then it's a question of getting severance. And that severance could be substantial, John. It makes sense because if, if, if the case was if you're on contract and you don't get severance, then everybody in the world, every company would just hire people on contract. Well, absolutely. They'd, they'd be free of paying any severance. So, you know, the, the fast food restaurant that has kids flipping burgers, they could be independent contractor <laughs> burger flippers. Well, obviously the law is smarter than that. I always like to say it's substance over yeah. form. So if you look like an employee and act like an employee, you're an employee even if you call yourself an independent contractor. You can email the show anytime as well, Lior at employmenthour.com. You'll see that email address on your screen. Uh, Mary writes in, says, Lior, I was called into a meeting and told that I'm being let go. My termination letter says that I have three days to sign it back. The clock is ticking. Uh, what happens if I don't sign it on time? Well, John, most severance letters have a deadline, yep. and usually it's a, a Friday. So guess, guess when the busiest time in my office is, John? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess Friday. Friday. Afternoon. Close to 5. And the reason for that is people call me in a panic saying, my severance offer is expiring today. I need your help. And, and that's fine. I certainly encourage people to call me. But what I tell these people is what I'm going to tell our viewers right now. Do not worry about that deadline. Your legal rights do not expire Friday at 5 o'clock. In fact, you have two years, up to two, two years, years wow. to pursue your legal entitlements. What, why is that deadline there? I'm going to be very blunt, it's a pressure tactic, okay? That's all it is. The employer often wants the individual to feel that there's a deadline, there's something that they could be losing if they don't sign off on that severance uh, package on time. That's all it is. So here's how it works. I'm going to offer you a very bad severance package, less than what you're owed, and insist that you sign this by a certain date or else. Well, that doesn't work that way, John. Uh, you don't have to worry about that severance deadline. If you're owed something, then you're owed something, and you should get it, whether you sign it by Friday or Tuesday or any other day. You lose your job, take as much time as you need to find out what you're owed, to educate yourself, to inform yourself, whether it's a week, a month, or longer. Get some legal advice, and do not worry about that deadline. Someone watching, though, is going to think, okay, I get the, I don't have to sign it back, but it's the or else part I'm scared of. What happens if I go back and they give me less because I didn't sign Friday at 5? Well, John, let's look at it this way. If I owe you $100 and I say I'm only going to pay you 50 if you sign this document, well, you'll say thanks, but no thanks, right? Because I owe you $100. So what am I going to say then? Well, now that you didn't accept, I'm not even going to pay you the 50 it doesn't work that way. The law takes care of it. If your employer has to pay you 12 months severance and they're offering you six, it doesn't matter what the employer wants to do, you're gonna get your 12 month severance because the law decided that, not me, not the employer, the law took care of that. 1-855-821-5900, the number to get a hold of Lior on the show anytime. We'll take a short break and get back into a call right here on the Employment Hour in 30. Lost your job? Find out how much severance you're owed right now. SeverancePayCalculator.com. Accurate, anonymous, and free. SeverancePayCalculator.com. Lost your job? Employment law myth number five. There's no point in calling a lawyer because my employer treated me fairly. Fact. Over 90% of people are offered much less than they are owed. Always go to EmploymentLawyer.ca and check with the employment lawyer first. The Employment Hour in 30, 1-855-821-5900, the number on your screen to call Lior anytime. We've got a call now from, uh, from Steve. has got a question. i got a friend, and uh, she was just recently go. She's basically been working there since the last 23 years. No notice, no nothing. They pretty much told her, pack her stuff up and go. And my question is really simple, just exactly how much severance should she be entitled to? And she also came back, I think it was about approximately a year and a half ago, doing uh, chemotherapy. She had breast cancer. And thank you so much there, Lior. Okay. Wow, what, what a difficult situation. You come back to work, you, you fight something as awful as cancer, then you're let go. So my first question to her would be, wait a second, why were you let go? 
is it in any way related to your medical condition or your, or your disability absent? Because if it is, it's a human rights right. violation. Yep. It's illegal. It doesn't matter how much severance you get, it's illegal. So we want to understand, first of all, was this uh, termination that was unrelated to the medical issue? Or if it's related, there could be other entitlements that you may have under human rights legislation. But assuming it's otherwise a legal termination, that there's no human rights issues, after 23 years of service, again, depending on her age and position, she could be looking at anywhere from 18 to 24 months of severance. So if, if she wanna, she's one of the people that believed in the week per year, she may think it's 23 weeks. Right. It's not. It's somewhere between 18 to 24 months. So what I would say to Steve is to tell her to give me a call. We want to discuss not just the amount of severance, but also the issue of the human rights aspect, the medical condition. You cannot be let go because you're sick, because you were sick, or because you took a medical leave of absence. Something you might want to check out as well, severancepaycalculator.com. We'll put the address up on the screen. Now, we've mentioned this. Well, you, did, you haven't mentioned you haven't used it because you know it inside your head. You mentioned age, length of employment, and job title, three key elements to determining uh, severance. But now everybody through that website can do it for their own. Give me some details on it. John, one of the most important things that you can know about your legal rights and your employment legal rights is how much severance should you be getting if you lost your job. You, you came out of that termination meeting. You have that piece of paper, that severance letter. You want to know, is that fair? Is that adequate? Well, I've made it as easy as possible. You can always call me and I'll tell you. But if it's uh, midnight on a Friday, you're not going to get a hold of me. Uh, you go to severancepaycalculator.com. That's the address to go to. It's a tool. It's a free tool, anonymous. There's no strings attached. It takes about 10 seconds. You answer three questions, your age, your position, and the length of your employment. And you find out right there how much severance you're owed. It's a tool that everyone should have in their back pocket. Uh, if you know someone that's been let go, tell them to go to severancepaycalculator.com. You have the right to have that information. It's not what the employer wants to pay you. It's how much you're actually owed and the place to go to, severancepaycalculator.com. People are going to try it. They're going to look at it and go, okay, wait a minute here. I got what I've got on my severance offer. This is like two weeks. You're saying eight months. There's got to be a bug in this. Yeah. How many times have we had a call like yeah. that on a radio yeah. show? People are saying, is this accurate, Lior? You, you know, it says that I get uh, 20 months severance. Is, is there a bug in the system? There isn't a bug in the system. There is no bug in the system. Those assessments are accurate. It's what the law provides. The reason so many people think that it's a lot, it's because there's these misconceptions. Mm -hmm. As we were talking about at the top of the show, people believe certain things that are wrong. And when the calculator actually outlines how much you're owed, for some people, it could be surprising. And they can contact you at the bottom. There's a green button, right? Nice button. You can contact me right there. And by the way, you may not have lost your job, but you've always been curious as to how much you'd be owed. SeverancePayCalculator.com. And it's not like we're picking on employers, but there's an employer mode as well. Just in case, you know, it comes down the pike that you need to let somebody go, you want that same information. So you don't want to shortchange them. You're honest about yeah. it. You can use the severance pay. A lot of employers want to do what's right by their employees. There's an employer mode on the severance calculator. It works just as well to inform and educate employers as to what their legal obligations are. Lior at EmploymentHour.com is the email address to write in and ask a question. Philip says, uh, I was let go after I complained to HR that my supervisor was harassing me constantly. Is this legal? Well, John, it's not legal. It's absolutely not legal. Certainly, if Philip was let go because he filed this complaint or he spoke with HR about harassment, an employer has a very strict legal duty here in Ontario to take these matters seriously, to investigate, and then to try to fix the problem. What an employer cannot do in any situation is penalize someone for having the audacity to bring up a human right, or sorry, a harassment uh, issue. Uh, employees should feel comfortable and empowered to bring those uh, complaints up. It's called a reprisal, it's a, right? You, I'm learning. learning. I'm He's learning. learning. Okay, right. I guess my job here is done. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but in all seriousness, John, uh, it is a reprisal. Our, our laws take it very seriously when someone is trying to enforce their legal rights and they're punished for it. So you speak to your manager, and if you're let go because of that, you give me a call. The law's going to come down hard on the employer. We all have a right to work in a harassment-free workplace, and it's the employer, employer's obligation when it becomes aware of harassment to investigate and to fix the problem. Uh, they can't ignore that obligation, and they can't punish anyone for enforcing their rights. 1-855-821-5900. That is the number to get a hold of Lior anytime. We'll take a short break here and get right back into another phone call. We continue with more Employment Hour in 30. Lost your job? Employment law myth number five. There's no point in calling a lawyer because my employer treated me fairly. Fact. Over 90% of people are offered much less than they are owed. Always go to employmentlawyer.ca and check with the employment lawyer first.
Lost your job? Find out how much severance you're owed right now. SeverancePayCalculator.com. Accurate, anonymous, and free. SeverancePayCalculator.com. And back with more of the Employment Hour in 30, one 821 5900 is the number to get hold of Lior to call in. We'll uh, get to a question and a call from John. I've been with this company now for almost four years. I was made aware recently that I've been put on a performance improvement plan, and I've been on one for two months without being made aware of it uh, beforehand. I said, well, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, and, and the response was, you're already on one. We just haven't told you yet. And why do you think all the follow-ups have been about? Can you be put on a performance improvement plan without being made aware of it, even if it's an informal one? No. Wow. You know, it, it, it's, it's so silly to me, and, and here's why. I don't mean to, to make light of the situation at all. But what is the purpose of a performance improvement plan? Is to tell someone, you're not doing a good enough job, we need you to improve, and, and by the way, here's how we need you to improve. Well, if you don't even know you're on a performance improvement how plan, <laughs> how are you going to improve? Uh, it, it, it's useless, it's, it's, yeah. and actually it's absurd. So no, you actually cannot be on a performance improvement plan that's a secret plan, we don't talk about it, no one knows about it. The, if you're actually put on a performance improvement plan, that's an actual document if you would have had a chance to read, to review, to agree to, and, and to, uh, to respond to. So an employer can't say, well, we put you on a performance improvement plan, we didn't tell you about it, you didn't do enough uh, to improve, now we're going to let you go. You actually have to be given the proper opportunity, the, the information that you need, the support that you need to improve your performance before the employer can consider a termination. So in this situation with our caller, if, if they have the audacity to try to let you go, not having told you you're on a performance improvement plan, that's absurd. You really have to give me a call. From an employer's standpoint, is a performance improvement plan putting someone on that would that be the first step towards possibly down the road letting somebody go for cause yeah it, you know it's, it's like it's like building something you, you start at the bottom and you build your way up uh, if an employer wants to let someone go for cause it needs to start building its case and it may start with a warning uh, maybe a performance improvement plan maybe a suspension we escalate our measures and at some point we may be in a position to terminate employment oftentimes we see employers jumping the queue uh, you know they, they go to step three before they've done step one and two that's wrong, often resulting in a wrongful dismissal. Again, cause as opposed to without cause, one is with severance, one is without severance. That's, yeah. the, that's the key, right? You, you only lose severance if you've done something terrible and if the employer has shown that it tried to fix the problem but failed. That is rare, John. And talking about losing your job, we'll get into the uh, top five things to do if you've lost your job. Number one, you can expand on each of these. Uh, make sure you have a copy of any employment agreement that you signed. Ask the company for a copy if you need to, if you don't have one. Yeah, the employment agreement, John, is a very important document. It's important in many respects. We'll talk more in the future weeks about the employment agreement. But we need to see it usually if you lost your job. It may help us assess how much you're owed, uh, both in terms of severance, both in terms of bonuses. So it's a very important document to have. If you don't have a copy, ask for it. It's, there's nothing wrong with asking HR, the company owner, for that document. We want to see it. Now, it's, is it fatal if we don't have it? No, but it always helps to have it. So uh, don't ever be shy in asking for it. It's an important document. Is it better to have an employee agreement like that or a little <laughs> one-pager? Oh, gosh, John. Most people would think, you know, the detail. I want the detail. That's yeah. what's going to save me. You right? know, John, I, I want to talk about this topic, but I'm, I'll, I'll say this, that you are far better off as an employee. To, to start a job on a handshake uh, without any employment agreement, that means you have full protection of the law. Usually what a written employment agreement does is try to take away some of the rights you would otherwise have. We'll talk about it more, but for now, don't be afraid about the short document. Be scared of the 10-page document with a lot of legalese. That's the good document that's going to cause problems. The top five things to do if you've lost your job. Next one on the list, make arrangements to retrieve your belongings and return any company property if you have any. You always want to leave professionally, John. Return company property. Make sure you get what's yours. Uh, you never want to be chased or to chase someone for, for what's supposed to be returned. Uh, I always believe in, in building bridges, not burning them. And one way to do that is to be above board when it comes to returning what, what belongs to the company. Sometimes your, what's going to be your former employer will offer to pay for career counseling moving forward. Take advantage of it, yeah? Absolutely. Career counseling is a great tool. It, it's a tool that helps you find another job, work on your resume and your interview skills. And some employers offer that as part of a severance uh, package. And they oftentimes would offer that even if you don't accept their severance package. Take advantage of it. Use that. Your goal if you lost your job is to find another job. And if this is a tool that helps you, that's another thing you want to do if you lost your job. 
take advantage of outplacement counseling. Top five things to do if you've lost your job. We'll get to another one on this list. Get legal advice before you accept any severance offer. We've, we've nailed this down so far this half hour. Or simply use a severance pay calculator, right? That's right. You, you have to know what you're owed. And it's not always obvious, John. And, and there's a lot of misconceptions out there. You may go online uh, and, and find out things that are not true or they're only half true. So it's an important time when you lose your job. You don't have an income. You have to support your family still. There's still a lot of obligations that you have. So you need to get that advice. Uh, you don't like me, call another employment lawyer, but get legal advice, John, if you lost your job. It's the most important thing that someone can do to understand what they're owed, to enforce their entitlements, and to make sure they have enough compensation to carry them until they find another job. Two things people will be thinking, though, is number one, if I uh, contact a lawyer, it's going to be scary, it might be expensive, it might be lengthy, or I'm going to go to court. A lawyer means I'm going to court. No, and, and, right. and that may be true in other areas of law. It's not true when it comes right. to employment law. Employment disputes tend to resolve quickly, professionally, amicably, uh, and, and without uh, going to court. It's so rare for a matter to have to go to court. Uh, it's you know one out of a hundred. Most of the times matters resolve very quickly within a few weeks with some correspondence back and forth with the company. So never be afraid of the process. Don't let the process or fear of the process stop you from enforcing your legal rights. Wrongfuldismissalquestions.com, another website you can check out. Give me some details on it. This is new. Well, we're here, John, uh, once a week answering questions. We're here on the radio also answering questions. But some people may have other questions. They don't want to get on air. They don't want to uh, ask questions in one of our forums. So we created another website, wrongfuldismissalquestions.com. You go on there, you log in anonymously, you don't have to give a name, and you just ask your question. Usually myself or one of the lawyers that work at my firm will answer probably within minutes. It's a great tool for you to have your questions answered um, by your specific situation. And there's already a lot of questions that have been answered there. You may already find the answer to your questions there. Again, it's all in the name of educating and informing people and giving them that access to legal information. We'll get to one from Maheen. Use that uh, wrongfuldismissalquestions.com. Maheen says, I was fired when I took time off uh, due to a family issue. I was told that if I don't show up, I no longer have a job. I've been employed with them for six uh, years full-time and have not missed more than eight days, none of which were back-to-back. -back. Well, th th that's wrong, and certainly an employer has to provide some leeway, and there's also leaves of absences under the Employment Standards Act that the employer has to provide. In this case, actually, maybe a, a breach of the Employment Standards Act. We have family care leave, emergency leaves that we're allowed to take under the Employment Standards Act that protects our job. So if that's what happened to him, the employer decided well, we're not going to abide by our legal obligation, which is exactly what this sounds like uh, what happened. Uh, he has recourse. Uh, he's not only is he owed severance, there could be, again, reprisal type of damages here. So very important to get advice. And this goes for medical leave as well, right? Absolutely. Medical leave. Uh, you, an employer doesn't get to choose when you take a medical leave. It's, if you can't work, you have a doctor's note, you get to be off work. The employer can't say, well, we don't have medical leave. A doctor decides if you get to be on leave. How much leeway does the employer have if you're on a medical leave as far as asking when you'll be back, what's wrong with you? Do they, do they have any leeway in that regard? Well, an employer, I always say, is allowed to know prognosis, not diagnosis. So an employer can find out and ask for information from you uh, about when can you be back and what your limitations are. They cannot know what's your medical condition, uh, uh, what medication you're taking. They're not allowed to have that information. All they need to know is whether you can and cannot work and when that may change. So a lot of times I see employers overreaching asking for information that they're not allowed to have. That's wrong. That could be a human rights violation. Uh, an employer should also not be harassing an employee that's off work trying to get better. And I do see that, unfortunately, as well. And again, more reason, yet another one, to get legal advice. There's one quick takeaway from this half hour, severancepaycalculator.com. Very important website. It will pay dividends in years to come. Trust me. Again, let's go through it one more time. You lost your job. Yeah. You want to know how much you owed. Maybe your friend, your, your family member lost your job. Severancepaycalculator.com is the easiest fastest, most immediate way to find out on the spot how much you are owed. Uh, you answer three questions and you're done. And then you're armed with this information. Maybe you, you think it's coming down the pike. You've been called into a meeting next week and you think that's it, they're letting you go. You want to be prepared. You want to know already, what are you looking at? How much would they have to pay you? Severancepaycalculator.com is the place to go. It's an easy to use tool. Hundreds of thousands have used it in the last five years that we've created it. And I encourage everyone watching us right now to go there and, and to use it and benefit from that information. And again, don't sign anything until they've talked to you, right? You know, how many times have I got calls, literally hundreds of times, John, from people calling me after they signed off on a severance package. Now they've realized they're owed more. 
At that point, it's too late. So please don't let that happen to you. If you lost your job, you call me, and then we go from there. Until next time, 1-855-821-5900. Join us again next weekend right here on the Employment Hour in 30. Lost your job? Find out how much severance you're owed right now. SeverancePayCalculator.com. Accurate, anonymous, and free. SeverancePayCalculator.com.